everybody. Thanks so much for listening to Fire, Breathe, and Rob. If you're listening to us on YouTube, please subscribe, like, and share, and hit the bell so you get the new interviews and the new updates of our channel. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, uh, thanks so much. Keep it up. Definitely share those interviews. If you're listening to us on the radio, definitely keep listening. We appreciate that. It's so oh, oh. We appreciate that also. I got tongue-tied because there's so many things to say now. Uh, it, it gets tough sometimes. But we have a special guest on, a man that's done so many things. I'll tell you, I met him, I don't know, maybe two, two or three months ago online. Yeah. And gosh, I was so impressed by his resume, all the things he's done to his life. I mean, we could probably do a three or four hour show on this, mm -hmm. but we're, we're not. We'll have him come back next another time and talk more. But uh, this is Mustafa Amar, and he is the CEO of the Passion NBA. He's going to talk about this, but he's also done a lot. He's been a pharmacist. He's been a diplomat. He's been an investment banker. And obviously, he's doing what he does now with the Passion NBA as far as coaching and that stuff goes. So first of all, uh, Mustafa, thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate this. I'm excited about this. And you're going to teach me, along with the viewers, a lot today, I feel like. Thank you so much, Rob. Good good afternoon to you, your viewers, your listeners, and it's it's a pleasure. I mean, I I enjoyed our discussion, our brief discussion that we had a few months ago. But uh, uh, I mean, it's very interesting. I was always looking forward to have our discussion. <laughs> right? No, I appreciate that. We have a lot of millennials that listen, so I'm sure they're going to learn a lot for you. I do want to talk about the Passion MBA, but I want to go through your life story and kind of kick into that. So I know I brought up a lot of things that you were involved in, but can you tell the viewers to start off with a little bit about yourself and how you jumped from all these different and fascinating jobs into what you're in now? Thank you. So uh, simply, I'm someone who lived several career lives in one single life. You know, when I, when I started that, I never realized that I was doing so, but I was always trying to pursue my passions. Uh, I started my first career as a pharmacist. Uh, my major was in pharmacy, but that was out of passion for chemistry. I wanted to study all kinds of chemistry. Uh, that's why I studied it. And then I moved to international diplomacy. So that was a quite long career for myself. I, I worked as, uh, as a diplomat for 11 years of my life. Um, out of passion of traveling the world, you know, learning other cultures and other languages and bridging gaps, you know, uh, among different cultures. Uh, my third life was an investment banker. So I work as a banker in a multinational investment bank, which is very, very similar in nature uh, to the World Bank. Um, so I worked there for four years. And that was another challenge too. Uh, my passion there was to, you know, bring those money and those investments to some developing countries. So I was trying to do so in countries like in Middle East, Africa. I was trying to do as well in Latin America. Uh, and that was a huge passion for, for myself. Uh, my current life, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. So I am the founder and CEO of the Passion MBA, which is a global coaching company. Uh, I'm also a life coach. So uh, based on my practical experience, so I'm coaching hundreds of professionals around the world to find their dream careers and build their dream businesses. Uh, I'm a blogger, so I write about career topics, business topics uh, twice uh, a week. Uh, and I'm also an author of the upcoming book, The Passion Project. Uh, so, Mustafa, I want to talk about, you know, being a diplomat. Now, I mean, that's pretty incredible. So how did you switch from <laughs> being in medicine and being a pharmacist to being a diplomat? I mean, that's like a totally different change. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if we, we go back to when I was seven years old, for example, I, I remember when, you know, my relatives, you know, my family used to ask me, what do you want to, to be when you grow up? And I just say a few things. You know, I want to be an engineer, an astronaut, a diplomat, a soccer player, you know, like four or five things. But then the, the, the same answer I was getting from each, each one of them was like, no, you can't. You know, it's only yeah. one. <laughs> you have to stick to one. <laughs> and um, it was, you know, very challenging because I wanted, really, I wanted to do all of the, these things. Um after some, you know, like I think after two years or so, I started conforming with that. Okay, I have to pick one. Um, when I was 10 years old, I saw that amazing guy. Uh, may he rest in peace. He died like five, six years ago. And he was an ambassador. You know? okay. And I saw that 
I would call him like encyclopedic personality, somebody who knows about everything, who can talk about everything. He can talk and speak in several languages. And I was like, wow. So for me as 10 years old boy, this was the inspiration for me. And I decided, you know, indirectly that I want to be like him, but I didn't know what should I do. When I was 14, I decided to be a diplomat. I started preparing, you know, whatever I could do to be a diplomat, I started, you know, learning about. For example, learning about the capital of the world, you know, uh, geography, history, reading, you know. Um, but then what happened, I got this shift in my passion. When I was 16, I loved chemistry. Right. Um, and I decided to follow my passion. Um, you know, it, it, it's very, and I understand, you know, at that age, uh, it's so confusing. You know, you don't know much about your future, right? <laughs> and I believe each one of us has been in that situation. Yeah. Um, but I think the the simple answer for me was follow your passion. You know, yeah. don't bother about the future. Don't bother about what you're going to do after graduating, but just follow your passion. And um, when I was 16, I, I decided to study all kinds of chemistry because I loved chemistry. And I told my dad, you know, I am changing. So I'm not going to be a diplomat or let's say I'm just going to study chemistry. I'm going to study pharmacy because it has all kinds of chemistry. Um, and then if I have the opportunity when I graduate to look back at my old dream, I will do it. Okay. But at least I'm fulfilling my passion. And this is how everything started. So I went to pharmacy. I studied for five years was amazing. I fulfilled my passion to chemistry. I don't want to study chemistry anymore. <laughs> and um, by the end of the last semester, I started recalling back my old dream, you know, to be a diplomat, I, what, what I really wanted to do. And I started preparing for that. I started e even reflecting and thinking whether that matters for me, whether I want to do it or not. Uh, should I stay forever in the pharmaceutical industry or no? So all these questions were always in my mind before even graduations. Mm. But I made my decision. I took my time. And we can always dive deeper into, you know, the, the decision-making process because it's very, very important. When you change your career, you really need to prepare. You really need to reflect. And you need to take your decision when you are in the highest spiritual status. You know, you don't want to take a decision which is very important for your life while you know you're not focused um, and this is how i started preparing to be a diplomat it was hard on me i still recall as of now like like 99.9 percent .9 of people around me were saying that i cannot do it mm -hmm. and in many ways you know the extreme way would be you are stupid you're wasting your time you cannot do it and in a, in a very you know the average way would be really a diplomat are you sure you know uh, but i believed in that you know it's something i believe them i took my time to decide and i i saw that it's helping me to pursue my passions so I, that's why I, I had to fight for it right i had to prepare myself i didn't have the talents the skills that i needed to be a diplomat but i had to learn them right the language that i had to learn the skills um and I still remember on a daily basis, I was repeating what people used to tell me uh, because that's a, a, a very big competition. It happens sometimes once a, uh, every two years. And I, you know, we are 2,000 contestants and at the end, they want to take 20 or 30. Okay. So it's, it's very, very harsh for me. And I remember people around me were telling me, do you think that they take you, you, a pharmacist and leave all those guys with their majors in global affairs, economics, and international law. Do you think so? And I was asking myself the same question every day. Uh, do you think that they take you? You know, you're a pharmacist, you know. <laughs> they are much better guys than you. Um, but then the answer I was I was trying to answer in another question. You know, yes, it's impossible for me. Yes. But is it impossible for God? And it really, you know, it needs a lot of faith. It needs a lot of faith in yourself, faith in the universe, in God, in, you know, in, in that the universe is, is fair when you do your best for a long time. On the long term, it's fair. And my answer to that question in the same moment, of course, no. Of course, it's not impossible for him. 
then, okay, come back to your part, do your part, focus on what you have to do, learn, you know, and educate yourself, and the rest is for him, you know. Uh, and that helped me a lot. So then you went into investment banking. <laughs> it's like from, you would, that's a huge different extreme from, you know, like, so we go back to pharmacists, then going into, you know, global affairs, being a diplomat, that's a huge extreme. And then from that to investment <laughs> banking, it's another extreme. So how did that journey start? Um, the lesson learned in that part of my life was we really should build an open mindset. Okay. okay. And because sometimes we need something, we are just, you know, it's this, I really have to do it. Okay. And uh, sometimes the universe sent to us messages, signs, you know, omens, opportunities, right. you know, to guide us, right? And because we don't know much about future, we almost know nothing about our future. We're just planning, but we don't know what will happen, right? And I believe the universe knows. Okay. So it's guiding us through that. It's, it's you know, it's your life purpose. And we are pursuing our life purposes. You know, whatever your life purpose is, for example, you know, somebody like you, you're offering a lot of values, right? To millennials, right? And, and people who are just starting to live their lives in a professional way. Uh, so that is your life purpose, but maybe you didn't know that life purpose 10 years ago, right? So what you're doing is you're pursuing you know, few passions until you figure out what's the big thing in my life, okay? And in that regard, I still remember I was in, uh, so I work as a diplomat in the United Nations for a short mission. Uh, I work in Africa and Malawi and then in China. And then I got that small opportunity, which almost everybody could push away, you know, because come on, you know, I don't need to do something new and different and, you know, I have to learn and I will look ridiculous because I don't understand anything about it which is overseeing infrastructure projects. So I was the one who was handling all those infrastructure projects back home and outbound investment. And I did that for three years. I did it with an open mindset. I didn't know that it would, would lead me somewhere, okay? But sometimes the big opportunity doesn't come right away. So the big opportunity sends a small opportunity first to test you. So if you take the small opportunity, then you are preparing yourself for the big one, right? If you don't take it, then the big one will never come. Right. right? And that's what happened. So I, I got that opportunity. I was lucky, but I believe it's because I was ready for the first one. And the first one make me ready for the big one. I moved to, to an investment, you know, investment banking industry. I worked there for four years. It was, uh, again, an amazing experience. I did my MBA during those four years. Uh, I thought I was doing my MBA to grow in that career, but because, you know, doing an MBA is like knocking different doors. You're learning about a lot of stuff from finance, you know, to accounting, to uh, entrepreneurship, to different other stuff. So it's kind of, you know, you are adding more values. And this is how I came to my fourth life. For people that are listening, again, it's Mustafa Amar. He is the founder and CEO of the Passion MBA. Definitely look it up. And if you're still listening to us, please subscribe, like, and share this interview, of course. As we keep moving into the interview, now we are moving to what you're doing today, Mustafa. And that is obviously the Passion MBA. And you are coaching young entre entrepreneurs, helping them out to try to accomplish what you've accomplished in life, I personally believe. So can you talk about the Passion MBA and how it started and, and what sure. you do right now? Sure. So the idea is that I look back to my my different careers and what mm -hmm. I was able to do. And I figure out that I have a blueprint, you know, so being able to do that, you know, major shift in my career from a pharmacist to a diplomat into investment banker, and then to an entrepreneur, uh, they were like very major shifts. But then I found out that I have this blueprint, which maybe in the first career shift, I didn't follow uh, closely, or let's say, I didn't know intentionally that I'm following that. And then I did it again in the second career shift, and then the third, and then the fourth. 
And I said, wow, that's, that's amazing. And actually that's a blueprint and it helped me and it could help other people too. So I started testing it on other people and it worked. Um, so it's, it's mainly, let's, let's say, if you are on a long journey traveling, you know, on like 5,000 miles, for example, uh, unless you have your fuel, enough fuel in your car, mm -hmm. unless you have GPS tracker to guide you through, you know, your, your path, and unless you have a final destination to put on, on the GPS, right, you will, you know, you, you will lose your way at some point, you know. So let's say your fuel is your passion. Okay. If you don't have enough passion for whatever you're doing, either you burn out quickly or you stop at some point because it's a, again, it's a long journey, right? Your values are your GPS tracker. So unless you are aware of your values and each one of us has, you know, his or her different values, mm -hmm. um, then your values are what will make you going on the right track or the right path. And then your vision for your dream lifestyle is what is the end destination where you want to arrive at the end, right? So I had this combination and it works very well. Whatever you want to do, whether it's business or another career or so, that process actually it helps to reach that destination. But if you are talking to people that are involved in that new chase to another career that they actually enjoy, not the job that they hated, uh, what would you tell them and how would you help them? Because maybe they don't have a lot of money, like you said. Exactly. So, you know, post-crisis, as human beings, we tend to focus on the survival needs. Uh, there's that interesting, I call it, uh, I mean, he's Maslow. Uh, pyramids and, and uh, um, Maslow is a, a psychologist and someone who was very famous in the 50s and he had the needs of human beings um, ranked in five levels okay so the bottom of the pyramid we have our food you know shelters uh, water you know drink whatever and then you go up to the the, the next layers a friendship zone, you know, self-esteem zone, and then the up there, the top of the pyramid, is the self-actualization and the fulfillment. Okay, and what happened is post-crisis, people tend to go down to the lower part of the pyramid. So, oh, I need to live my life. I need to have my home, a place to live in, right? And food, I need to pay my bills, and that's it, right? And that's fine, as of post any crisis. We all have to focus on all those non-negotiable needs, right? But we shouldn't forget about the top of the pyramid, which is, you know, self-actualizations and fulfillment. And in that regard, you will never live a fulfilled life if you're only are trying to satisfy the needs are down there, uh, you know, the bottom of the pyramid. Right. So you need to satisfy both, right? And that's very, very crucial because people, you know, tend to focus on what's happening down there and they forget their dreams. You know, we all have dreams, either childhood dreams or, you know, something I really wanted to do or, you know, a big thing I wanted to do or a skill I wanted to learn, but I never tried, you know. And the other mistake people do is mostly we separate between our careers and our life. Okay. Mm -hmm. My career is something I've got money for to pay for my bills, you know, and my expenses. And my life is something else. And that's actually, it's a big mistake. Because if you're not happy and fulfilled in your career, you will never be happy in your life, right? So what I'm trying to do here is bring both together, you know, make sure that whatever career you're doing is will satisfy, that will satisfy your passions, your values, your value can be your family, right? So you have to build something around your family. I give you an example of myself because at some point, especially in the banking career, I was away from my family. I wanted to get closer to my parents. I was thousands of miles away from them. I was always trying to visit them even once per month or two months for two or three days. That, that's tough on me, right? Oh, yeah. And I said, okay, now my family is, is a value that I'm endangering, especially that my parents are getting old, 
right? So I really have to do something on that. So I have to rebuild my career on something that right, fits with that purpose. Another value is freedom. Okay. So if your freedom is, for example, number one or two core value, you cannot endanger your freedom. So build your next career around that. Okay. So that's why the process will help people to figure out what to really enjoy in their life, what their passions are, what their values are, and link both their lives and their careers so they can enjoy both. Yeah. What would you tell them as far as investing in a new business? Because may, like I said, maybe they don't have that kind of money. So how can they be wise and to put money in, in their business, but also not spend everything they have and then everything exactly. crumbles and then <laughs> they're in really yeah. bad shape, you know? Exactly. Something I learned in my life is that in order to start the business, you don't need cash. You don't need money, you know? Um, and I was having always that idea. If I if I have to build a business, I have to put, you know, <laughs> hundreds of thousands in, in, in something. But that's actually not true. Uh, there are many ways to bring money from somebody else, including your clients. Okay. Um, I, I, we can dive deeper into hundreds of examples of people who build their businesses without their money, without money, actually, only by building a concept and then finding the first paying customer, you know? So, because when people do that mistake and focus on venture capital or, you know, seed financing or so, they are doing two separate full-time jobs. Okay, to raise fund, that's a that's a the full time job, and to build your company, that's another <laughs> hassle, right? So if you're doing two full time jobs at the same time, you know we were gonna focus on one, right, and forget about the, the other. The most important aspect here is focus on your business, and rather I would rather please my client than pleasing my you know fi financiers or or my investors. Uh, so first focus on the concept, the idea, and how you sell the first paying customer. And there are a lot of ways to, you know, there's subscription model, you know, in subscription model, people can pay you, you know, on a monthly basis, weekly basis, you know, three month basis. And you take that money, enter it into cash cycle of the business, and you don't need to get money from, you don't need your own pocket money. Okay. Right. Pay in advance. That's another model in, in coaching and counseling. You know, you you get paid in advance, and then so there are a lot of models. I don't um, uh, advise anybody to put their pocket money into a business. <laughs> so I'm sure you you're helping people a lot right now, and I, I I know this information that you've spoke through the interview has helped a lot of people. But as we wind down into the interview talking about the passion MBA, what do you hope people learn from, you know, passion MBA in general? And even if you want to touch on the book, I know it hasn't came out yet, but if you want to talk about that in general also. Sure. The, the, the main idea is if you have a passion, if you have a dream and you are stuck somewhere out of fear, go and get it. Yeah. That's the main idea. And when you go and get it, Life will surprise you with amazing surprises. You know, uh, you never expected, you know, these things to happen to you. The same, uh, same happened to me. I never expected, you know, all those good things. But because I was trying to follow that, you know, just follow it step by step. And you will have a lot of amazing surprises. Um, as of the book, um, the book is coming out hopefully sometime later this year. Um uh, but I'm building it as a project. So if we imagine our lives or careers or businesses as projects, which is the case, you know, uh, there's some of us are building their lives, careers on weak foundations. So what happened is the whole project would collapse at some point, right? Some others, they build their lives or careers on wrong foundations. Which means, for example, I like to do something and then my father or somebody else is pushing me to study something else and have another career. In it. And that's actually a wrong foundation for me. It doesn't suit me. So what happened? I will spend most of my life feeling sad, terrible, trying to fix the problems coming from this. Okay. Right. So the main advice is we all should build our lives on the right foundations. 
that suit us. It's, you know, for us. And then your life will flourish. And then you're going to have a high rise building or a pyramid or, you know, that can stay and live forever. So as we end with this, uh, we, you know, we've been going through a real struggle in this country and around the world with uh, COVID, but give us a little bit of hope uh, for the people that are listening as far as millennials and the Gen Z crowd. Oh, um, life is tough. That's, that's, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> but we have to believe yeah. that the universe is fair. And uh, the level of fairness is on the long term. You know, sometimes life is tough on us on the short term. It happens. We suffer. You, we can talk about endless numbers of situations, <laughs> right? And uh, that we have been through. But the long term, we will win. So if you sustain, be consistent. Build small, you know, positive habits. Every day, do 10 minutes, 15 minutes. That's it. You don't need more than this, you know? But be consistent and be persistent and have faith in yourself you know, and you're going to rock. You're going to rule the world. All right, Mustafa Amar, he's, uh, again, the Passion MBA. Mustafa, as we end, can you tell people where they can find more about you in general? Sure, sure. So my website is thepassionmba.com. They can find a lot of uh, interesting free activities. They can have the 10 top mistakes to avoid when planning your career change. Or there is a quiz, you know, if you do it, they can figure out their next, let's say, <laughs> you know, industry or so. And if they want to uh, figure out their passions, there is the passion meter exercise. They can download it and, you know, figure out their passions. And they can do that on the website. I'm going to look into that myself too. <laughs> the Passion MBA again, Mustafa Amar. Thanks so much for your time. I'm looking forward to doing this again down the road. Thank you, once, Rob. Especially <laughs> once the book comes out. Thank you so much, Rob. Really appreciate it. It's been All a right, pleasure. Let me see.